Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. Uh, so, we are uh, discussing about SVMs that is support vector machines and uh, their applications in machine learning and essentially how to design these support vector machines to solve a classification problem in the area of machine learning. Okay. So, let us continue our discussion. So, we are looking at SVM or what we have also called as the support vector machine, which is essentially a machine to classify two sets of points, right. And uh, we said the central philosophy in the support vector machine is essentially now to design two hyperplanes. In fact, these are two parallel hyperplanes such that uh, let us say you have one set of points over here, another set of points over here, then you fit the thickest possible slab. What you are trying to do is basically trying to maximize this separation, so that you fit the thickest possible slab between these between these two classes right so that is essentially your separate support vector machine and this is essentially these are essentially your hyperplanes yeah in n dimensions now how do we solve this problem now let us go back and take a look at our hyperplane. Remember, we said the hyperplane uh, satisfies the equation a bar transpose x bar equal to c. So, we have the hyperplane a bar transpose x bar equal to c. Remember, this is our hyperplane. And the point is now it is not difficult to see that this vector a bar is the normal to the hyperplane, right. This vector a bar is the normal to the hyperplane, that is not very difficult to see because uh, let us again draw a picture over here to illustrate that you have this hyperplane right and you have this vector a bar i'm drawing it as a normal but you can quickly see that essentially we are going to prove this fact so let's say we have two points x1 bar on the hyperplane and we have another point x2 bar therefore these are the two points on the hyperplane which means we must have this implies that these both must satisfy in the hyperplane equation that is a 1 bar a bar transpose that is we must have a bar transpose x 1 bar equal to c and a bar transpose x 2 bar equal to c and both of these together these imply that a bar transpose if you subtract one minus the other one from the other then you have a bar transpose x 1 bar minus x 2 bar equal to 0. And remember x 1 bar minus x 2 bar is the line on the hyperplane lies on the hyperplane. So, this is your x 1 bar minus x 2 bar which essentially lies on the hyperplane. So, this implies that 
any line on the hyperplane x1 bar minus x2 bar that is essentially if you treat this as your x tilde so a bar transpose x tilde equal to 0 where x tilde lies is and now you can see this is any line any line or line segment or any line on on the hyperplane. So, a bar is perpendicular to every line on the hyperplane. So, a bar essentially this implies that a bar is perpendicular is perpendicular or basically is normal right normal again means the same thing normal to the so a bar is perpendicular to the hyperplane so we establish that a bar times x tilde equal to 0 where x tilde is any line on the hyperplane that essentially implies that a bar is the normal to the hyperplane now look at this interesting thing now let's go back take a look once again at the diagram what that tells us is the following now let's look at our hyperplane this is an abstraction the hyperplane will be in n dimensions i'm just showing the representation in two dimensions so this is your a bar which is the normal and let's say you have any other point which is your x bar ok this is basically 90 degrees and uh, now you have this vector a bar and this length of this is norm a bar length of this x bar is obviously norm x bar now look at this we have the equation of the hyperplane a bar the hyperplane satisfies remember the fundamental equation of the hyperplane is a bar transpose x bar equal to c ok let us say this is the equation of the hyperplane a bar transpose x bar equal to c now what this says is that basically this means now look at this we know what is the dot product a bar transpose x bar this is essentially norm of a norm of the vector a times norm of the vector x times cosine theta where theta is the angle between the vectors a bar and x bar ok. So, this if you call this angle as theta so this is essentially this implies that a bar transpose x bar which is essentially nothing but the dot product right this is the dot product that is basically this is a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus so on an times xn so this is essentially norm of a bar times norm of x bar times cosine theta is equal to c. But if you look at this quantity norm of x bar times cosine theta that is nothing but d the distance of the hyperplane from the origin right. So, if you look at this d d equals distance of hyperplane from the origin right. So, essentially we have this implies that norm of a bar times d equal to c which essentially implies that d equal to c divided by norm of a bar that is essentially 
this is essentially the interesting relation. So, the d is essentially distance of the hyperplane from the origin and we have this interesting relation that is if you look at this what we have just derived is essentially that d equals c divided by norm of a bar and if you think about this, this quantity uh, c, this c can be negative here this is although it is a distance it can be negative the reason being reason being if c is greater than 0 implies distance is along the vector the normal a bar. On the other hand, if c less than equal to 0, this implies the distance is opposite that of a bar that is the distance is along the direction that is opposite a bar that is you have two situations here right. So, essentially if you look at this what you will have is that you will have this hyperplane this hyperplane both are at the same distance this is the normal let us say a bar. So, this is essentially where your d will be greater than or equal to 0 and this. So, this is basically along a bar and this is basically what is this? This is opposite this implies the d is less than 0 or you can say less than or equal to 0. It will be 0 if that hyperplane passes through the origin that is c equal to 0. Okay, so, that also basically checks the formula. If your hyperplane is such that a bar transpose 6 bar equal to 0, that is your constant c is 0, then essentially the hyperplane is passing through 0. So, the distance from origin is 0. Further, if you look at two particular hyperplanes which only differ in the constant, that is you have a bar transpose 6 bar equal to c1, a bar transpose 6 bar equal to c2. Right. You can clearly see that these two hyperplanes are per parallel because the normal is the same. Right. So, if you have two hyperplanes, now the point here is again all these are simple principles that you might have already learnt in your high school. That is, if you have these two hyperplanes, let us draw these two hyperplanes. Right. So, you have these two hyperplanes this is a bar transpose x bar equal to c 1, this is a bar transpose x bar equal to c 2. These two hyperplanes will be parallel right. So, these two hyperplanes are parallel since the normal is the same since the normal is the same what is the normal normal is basically nothing but the normal vector is basically nothing but a bar that is if you look at this this is your a bar and a bar is perpendicular to both so, normal vector to both the normal vector is a bar to both the hyperplanes. Normal vector to both these hyperplanes is essentially your vector a bar. Now, therefore, what you can ask what is the distance between these two hyperplanes that brings us to the distance between these two hyperplanes and now you can naturally see the distance to between these two hyperplanes is basically d 1 minus d 2 
where d1 is the distance of the first one from the origin, d2 is the distance of the second from the one from the origin. So, if you look at d1, we already know d1 equal to c1 divided by norm a bar. And if you look at the distance to the second hyperplane, that is essentially your d2, which is equal to c2 divided by norm, uh, I am sorry, c2 divided by norm a bar. And therefore, the distance between the two hyperplanes naturally, if you look at this, if you call it as d, d equal to now distance between the hyperplanes this is equal to d1 minus d2 equals basically c1 minus c2 divided by norm of a bar okay so that is the interesting thing so the d distance between the hyperplanes d equals c1 minus c2 by norm a bar and remember this is the distance between the two parallel hyperplanes otherwise they are going to intersect right and which in which case the distance is of course it's not constant and the minimum distance will be zero so this is the distance between two parallel hyperplanes okay so this is the distance between the two parallel hyperplanes okay therefore we have essentially what we have done is we have found the distance between the two parallel hyperplanes now let us go back to our support vector machine problem and try to see what is the problem over there now if we go back to the support vector machine problem you will realize that we have exactly the same problem we have these two hyperplanes which are trying to insert the slab remember the thickest possible slab between these two sets of points that have to be classified so essentially where we stand now is that you have these two sets of hyperplanes so essentially where we stand now is you have these two hyperplanes one of these is basically the hyperplane remember a bar transpose x bar so you have these two point two sets of points and you have so this is your a bar transpose x bar plus p equal to 1 and this is your a bar transpose x bar plus b equal to minus 1 and if you look at the distance between these two now look at this this implies that a bar transpose x bar equals 1 minus b that is you can call that as c1 and this implies a bar transpose x bar equals minus 1 minus b which you can call as c2 and therefore if you look at the distance that is the thickness of this slab now once again we come to the problem our problem of the thickest slab the thickness of this slab if you think about that is basically going to be equal to so the thickness of this slab equal to distance between hyperplanes
distance between hyperplanes equals c 1 minus c 2 divided by norm a bar which in this equal to d equal to c 1 that is basically you have 1 minus b minus c 2 minus 1 minus b divided by norm of a bar which is essentially if you look at this, this is equal to essentially 2 by norm of a bar. So, this is essentially what we are calling as the separation between the points, separation between the classes. This is the thickness of the slab which is essentially the separation between the classes. is essentially the separation between the classes and uh, therefore, now we have to find the hyperplanes or the slab which maximizes the separation between the classes. In other words, we have to maximize the distance between the hyperplanes or maximize this quantity 2 divided by norm of A. So, to maximize the separation therefore, it naturally follows in order to maximize separation we have to maximize 2 divided by norm a bar that means minimize take the reciprocal that is minimize norm a bar. And therefore, finally, our SVM problem can be formulated as follows maximize the separation. this is essentially remember we have the objective which is to essentially maximize the separation maximize the separation subject to the constraint remember y k times you have a bar transpose x bar that is if you go back and take a look at this what we have over here that is the constraint is that a bar transpose x a bar transpose x bar k plus b greater than equal to 1. So, that is essentially what that means is we have the constraints a bar transpose x bar k plus b greater than or equal to 1 for k equal to the m points 1 2 up to m. This implies the net problem will be minimize this is what we have shown to maximize the separation we have to minimize norm a bar subject to the constraint that uh, y of k times a bar transpose x bar of k plus b is greater than or equal to 1. This is the problem for the support vector machine. So, this is essentially the problem for the this is the problem for the support vector machine. Okay. So, this is essentially the problem for the support vector machine and this is what is known as a convex optimization problem. This is known as you have the objective function, you have the constraints. This is what is known as a convex optimization problem and this can be solved efficiently using uh, several software. Okay. So, this is a convex optimization problem.
all right. So, this can be solved efficiently using tools or rather computational tools such as for instance CVX, one can readily solve this using several computational tools, software such as CVX and that essentially shows how this principles of linear algebra and in fact we have used a lot of these principles of linear algebra and geometry right that is hyperplanes, equation of a hyperplane, the inner product, distance of the hyperplane from the origin parallel hyperplanes, distance between these hyperplanes and then eventually designing the classifier or the support vector machine which essentially maximizes the separation between these two classes of points. That is essentially your support vector machine. In fact, this is one of the most important, one of the prominent tools uh, that has been used and is in fact also currently being used and one of the most attractive features about the support vector machines as you can see is the simplicity of the analysis because it is linear in nature. It simply builds based on hyperplanes, designing the hyperplanes such that uh, you choose the set of hyperplanes, parallel hyperplanes with the maximum distance between, between them and that can be posed as a convex optimization problem which can be solved rather efficiently, right. So that is an application, interesting application of the principles of linear algebra in the context of machine learning. So we will conclude this discussion here and continue with other aspects in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much. Thank you.